Moving into a new town is never easy. It can be scary and anxiety-inducing, especially when you're young. But these fears about fitting into a new place pale in comparison to what was experienced by Sam Walker when he moved into the quiet Missouri mining town of Drisking. He'd discover a nightmare beyond imagination in a place known as Baraska. What follows is one of the most terrifying creepypastas to ever hit the web, with an ending so scary and upsetting you won't want to believe it. The Walker family moved to Drisking after Sam's father, a police officer named Graham Walker, was transferred to the Drisking Sheriff's Department due to misconduct in his old precinct. He'd be working under the town's current sheriff, Killian Clary. Sam, his 14-year-old sister Whitney, and his mother all relocated to the town and had no idea they were about to come into contact with its horrific secret. After settling in, Sam made two friends, Kyle and Kimber. Over that summer, the three became close as they explored the mountains that bordered their small town. Sam quickly took to the rhythm of his new location. He learned all the best places to hang out. He learned that the town was pretty much owned by the wealthy and influential Prescott family. And he learned some of the local legends. One of the most famous local stories was about the Triple Tree, a huge treehouse on top of an ancient oak tree. This may sound like a childhood dream, but Kyle and Kimber told Sam that there was a dark legend behind the Triple Tree. Anyone who didn't carve their name into the tree before entering the treehouse would disappear and die. If you wanted to survive, you needed to carve your name and recite a special poem. It went, Underneath the triple tree, there is a man who waits for me. And I should go, or should I stay? My fate's the same, either way. From the tree, you could supposedly hear the horrific, metallic grinding of the shiny gentleman, a legendary monster that lived in a place known as Baraska, inside the town's abandoned mines. The metallic grinding would regularly ring out of the mines, striking fear into the hearts of everyone who could hear it. Horrific creatures known as the Skinned Men were also said to roam in the caverns of Baraska. It was a place so scary that it was rumored to be the gate to hell itself. Nobody who ever went to Baraska returned alive. Somehow, Sam knew these were more than just scary stories. He was positive Baraska was a truly evil place, and a very real one. Scary rumors aside, Sam was settling in well to his new life. His sister Whitney, though, was as withdrawn as always. Sam had found his place in the social hierarchy at school, making new friends and new schoolyard rivalries. But something about the stories of Baraska haunted him. Whenever Sam asked an adult about the stories, even his father, they quickly shut him down. It seemed clear that adults didn't speak of the place up in the mountains. Sam learned more about the town of Drisking through a school presentation given by Jimmy Prescott, a descendant of the same Prescott family that built the town into what it was today. It had been started by miners before the turn of the century, before the mine shut down in 1951, after the veins of iron ore in the mountains went dry. It was at this point that the Prescott family swooped in and saved the town with their savvy business decisions. Sam was still curious about what was going on with Baraska, but his investigation was interrupted by a tragedy. His sister, Whitney, had vanished without a trace. Despite search parties across town, the girl was never found. Sam only found one piece of frightening evidence. Her name, freshly carved into the bark of the triple tree. Sam was sure Baraska had taken Whitney. Despite years of searching, no new developments were made in the case. Sam was 14 now, and nothing had changed. The tragedy had rocked him, but brought him even closer to Kimber and Kyle. Despite the fact that the two of them had started dating, they never made Sam feel like the third wheel. But in the five years since Whitney had disappeared, others had also gone missing under mysterious circumstances, all of them young girls. Though he tried to maintain the public appearance that he'd gotten over it, Sam knew, deep down, that this had something to do with the horrors of Baraska. The problem was, all the adults in town seemed to shut down any inquiry into the matter. Sam's dad, who had since become the town sheriff, wanted nothing to do with the questions his son was asking. Jimmy Prescott was equally evasive. There was some kind of secret here that they didn't want the kids to know. Sam was filling his spare time with part-time work at a local sandwich shop owned by the Prescott family. During one shift, he noticed that his boss, Mira, was crying in the back room. She was sobbing and inconsolable. Sam got so worried that he called Mira's husband. Apparently, the reason Mira was so upset was that she and her husband were trying to conceive a child, but things weren't working out. 
so they were dealing with expensive and stressful appointments at a fertility clinic out of town. It seemed like everybody was miserable in Drisking. Sam, Kyle, and Kimber were determined to get to the bottom of the mysteries popping up all around them. They paid a visit to the Drisking Historical Society to find out more about why the mines first closed. There, Miss Scanlon, the local historian, told them the story of the McCaskey Boys, a team of young miners killed in a mine collapse. When the mine was deemed structurally unsound and closed, the city authorized the use of dynamite to fully collapse the central shaft and destroy the mine. The Prescott family then took over the town not long after that. This gave the trio their next lead. While Jimmy Prescott wouldn't tell them anything, his elderly father, Thomas Prescott, was in a care home due to the effects of Alzheimer's. After pretending to be related to him, Sam, Kyle, and Kimber gained access to the home and were able to speak with Thomas Prescott directly. But Thomas's answers to their questions were rambling and incoherent. He spoke of a mysterious, toxic powder, of paying triple for an unknown service and doing what needed to be done, even if what needed to be done was horrible. It all sounded intriguing, but it didn't get them any closer to what happened to Whitney or any of the other disappeared girls. They needed to go further, but this investigation was cut short by a fresh tragedy. For reasons unknown, Kimber's mother had driven to the local hospital climbed up to the seventh floor window and jumped to her death. Kimber was devastated. She had been close to her mother and had no idea why she'd take her own life like this. Kimber's father had mentioned something to Sam's dad about her leaving a note, but this note was apparently never found. Nobody knew what to believe. It seemed as though Drisking was a magnet for tragedy and horror, but something deeper was going on, something that connected all these tragedies, and it all led back to Baraska. Many speculated on why Kimber's mother had taken her own life. Some suspected that she had always been troubled. Her fertility issues before finally becoming pregnant with Kimber had apparently left her traumatized, according to some local gossip. But with no note left, her tragic death would forever remain a mystery. Or so it seemed. Kimber knew that the suicide note actually had been found, but for some reason, her father was keeping it secret. She heard him reading it aloud to himself sometimes, and while she couldn't make much out of it, she could definitely hear the name Prescott being repeated over and over again. Just as the kids had suspected, Jimmy and his family were somehow involved, but they didn't know how. They needed a few final puzzle pieces to finally put the whole thing together. The trio believed that the truth must be in the suicide note from Kimber's mother. They just needed to get their hands on it, and they had a plan to do just that. Sam and Kyle would distract Kimber's father while he attended her mother's funeral. Meanwhile, Kimber, who had a sneaking suspicion she knew where the letter was hidden, would find and take it. It would be the perfect heist. On the day of the funeral, they set their plan into motion. Kimber's father was easily distracted by a conversation with Sam and Kyle, while Kimber did her part at home. The trio planned to meet up again to share their new information, and it seemed like there would finally be some headway in the investigation. But all their hopes of answers were cut short in the most horrific way imaginable. Kimber was now missing too disappeared without a trace before the three could meet up and share information. Baraska had claimed yet another victim. Sam and Kyle were devastated. Sam was eager to pursue the investigation in hopes of finding Kimber, Whitney, and all the other missing girls. But Kyle seemed truly broken by this last disappearance. He compared the town of Drisking to a hell on earth, a place where evil happens and is never punished. Sam managed to talk Kyle back into seeing this nightmare through to the end with him though, and they returned to Miss Scanlon the town historian. It was time to ask her directly about Baraska. Baraska, as she told them, was a miner's expression used for the first mine shaft to run dry of ore. Based on this, they were able to finally locate Baraska on a local map. They could finally go and see Baraska for themselves. The duo made their way to the spot they had found on the map, on the way passing by a defaced sign for Drisking Underground Mine. They thought these were the words which must have somehow become skinned men through the legend's frequent retellings. And soon after, they encountered the shiny gentleman. It wasn't a monster as it was in the legends. It was a huge, rusty grain thresher. The soil around it was tinted a dull crimson. Had it been used to grind up the bodies of missing people? Was that the metallic grinding noise they'd been hearing all these years? Not far away was a large building set against the mountainside near the boarded up mineshaft entrance. Inside that building is where Sam and Kyle would discover the horrific answers to all of their questions. When they entered, they saw countless women, bound to beds and heavily pregnant. Among them were Whitney and Kimber 
and many of the other girls who'd gone missing from the town throughout the years. Standing in this house of horrors was Jimmy Prescott, one of the key figures in orchestrating this nightmare. But he wasn't alone. Ex-Sheriff Clary was also in on the operation, and as Sam and Kyle were about to find out, much of the town had a hand in what was going on here. It had been staring them in the face the whole time, but they lacked the information to see the bigger picture until now. The mine explosion back in the 1950s had caused traces of iron ore, the toxic powder described by Thomas Prescott, to spill into the town's water table. It unknowingly poisoned the town's drinking water and led to widespread infertility among the populace. But the Prescott family swooped in and saved the day with a horrifying solution. They would kidnap women from the outside, impregnate them, and give their babies to the townsfolk who couldn't conceive. But it didn't stop there. The Prescotts were greedy, and they were producing more children than they needed. The excess babies were sold off to rich and powerful human trafficking organizations who worked to keep the feds out of Drisking, ensuring that the disgusting cycle could continue unabated. Kimber and Kyle themselves were the products of this horrific system. Almost everyone in the town was in on it, and they were kept silent out of fear of retribution. In the end, Kimber's mother had taken her own life out of guilt for what she'd played a part in covering up. Her note was a confession and a plea for Kimber to get out of town, a plea that arrived too late to save her. In the following struggle, Kyle was killed by Jimmy Prescott, and Sam barely escaped alive, only to discover one more horrifying truth. His father, Sheriff Graham Walker, was in on it the whole time. He'd been forced to leave his previous job for engaging in similar criminal affairs, and he'd secured his new job by selling Whitney, his own daughter, to the Prescott family. While Sam survived his ordeal, things were never the same. He'd gotten his answers, but they weren't the ones he wanted. In the end, he discovered that Boraska truly was a kind of hell, but there were no monsters. The evil lurking in the heart of Boraska was entirely human.